Hi, I'm attorney Julie Health, and we're going to talk more about the PIP statute today, but some applications that you can use both in PIP and BI. I want to talk about a particular section of the PIP statute, which is 5B1C. It's also known as fraud in part, fraud in the whole. So why is 5B1C important? 5B1C says that an insurer or an insured is not required to pay a claim or charges to a person who knowingly submits a false or misleading statement relating to the claim or charges. How is this applicable to BI if it's in the PIP statute? We'll go right back to that first part. It says the insurer or the insured. If the insured is not obligated to pay something, we would make arguments and we would file motions in the BI case that says these charges are not blackboardable. If it's something that we can prove as a matter of law, we'd argue that it should not come into evidence for what the damages are and not something that the defendant should be responsible for. Obviously in a PIP suit, that's that's just your argument. That's your defense of what you're going to do. So if the insu if the insured is the one that engages in this activity, they're putting potentially their whole claim at risk because it's not just the one section of the claim that they made a, a submission of false or misleading information with. Let's say they submitted mileage claims when they didn't have any or they inflated those mileage claims. It puts the payment of the whole claim at risk. If a provider does it, the provider puts that part of the claim of theirs at risk. If the insured didn't have any knowledge of it, didn't have anything to do with it, you'd have a very hard time making that argument. I think that the uh, other charges from other providers or things that the insured has submitted themselves are things that um, wouldn't necessarily need to be paid anymore. So. You can't say as the provider, well, you're right, I, I shouldn't have submitted any of these, um, I knew what I was doing, and but it's okay, pay me on the rest. Just don't pay me these codes, pay me these other codes. That's not how that works, and the, and the statute um, is very clear on that. There's great supporting case law on that. But I, what I want to do today is get into what does it mean, someone who knowingly submits. Where do you go to find out what that means? Well, you go to section 627732, which is the definition definitions section for the, in chap the insurance chapter for Florida. Knowingly means a person with respect to information, one, has actual knowledge of the information, which is what we would expect to be included there, two, acts in deliberate ignorance of the truth or falsity of the information, or three, acts in reckless disregard of the information and proof of specific intent to defraud is not required. Why is that language important? Well, you've got three different ways that you can meet that knowledge requirement under 5B1C. It doesn't just have to be, I, I knew it, I knew it was wrong, I submitted it, because then that'd be probably a pretty tough time ever getting a summary judgment on that. Um, and, and again, these this can be a, a more difficult area to get a summary judgment on because it can be fact intensive, but deliberate ignorance of truth or falsity, reckless disregard of the information, if something's very clear um, and it's clear as a matter of law, we could be able to proceed and pursue and get summary judgment on that. So let's talk about what some examples are of uh, potential things that could fall into this category. Um, backdating records. So let's say that in a, uh, an insured uh, comes into the clinic the first day the doctor isn't there and uh, they start on their therapy right away because why wait? Um, the doctor comes in another day, does an exam, they backdate that doctor's exam to another day to make sure that you've got a therapy prescription for everything. Not compensable if you're able to, to prove what has happened here. And that's, it takes a careful review of the documents, it takes careful questioning of the insured, but you need to know what you're looking for. Um, going back to fax stamps, looking to see when x-ray referrals were sent out, things like that. Um, adding time for a treatment that doesn't accurately reflect the time that was spent on a timed code. So let's say someone doesn't include any time at all on, an, on their documentation for something they bill two units for. That's a provision you might want to consider looking at this if the other side isn't willing in a PIP suit to withdraw the additional unit there because that's a very clear, clear thing that needs to be done and um, that I would argue falls in, within the uh, second or the third category of what we're calling knowingly. Um, a person did or supervised a treatment that didn't actually do it. Billing from people that had suspended licenses or no licenses at all. Um, treatment that's just not documented at all in your in your medical records. Um, 
or something that is inappropriately billed. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but it really does add up. And even if it doesn't add up, it's still false and misleading information that's coming in on your claim. So what's an example of that? Let's say that someone's billing for attended electric muscle stimulation rather than the unattended electric muscle stimulation. And just as a quick review, what's the attended version? That's the one that should be like the cattle prod, that the person, the therapist is actively standing there and zapping the person with the EMS. It shouldn't be the patches because all the provider has to do, the therapist has to do is put on the patches, set a timer and walk away. When you have a timed code, it's because there's an added component for the therapist. They need to do something else actively within that patient's treatment and that's why certain codes do have that unit billing. It's not, it took, it, the patient experienced this treatment for this long, it's the therapist had to do something for this long and that's that's when you should be seeing two units. So even keep that in mind for all time codes, not just the ones we're talking about right here today. So 5B1C, taking out charges that are um, from a person that knowingly submits a false and misleading claim or charge. Um, or false or misleading statement relating to the claim or charge, the insurer does not have to pay that. But even more importantly, the insured doesn't have to pay that. So these are arguments you can use and make in a BI case, um, whether you do it by a motion for partial summary judgment, whether it's motions in limine, um, about getting certain billing, not being able to get presented to the jury and being included as part of the damages. Um, that's another tactic that can you, you can use to, to know the codes, know your bills, know your records, and help keep your costs down on the BI side or win your, win your claim on the PIP side. We're always here to answer any questions that you may have on this or other topics. We have offices all around the state of Florida, and we thank you for watching. Stay well. Thanks.